Um, this might be one of these spots where probably fine to fold in, in practice, but like in Zoom 500, I prefer calling queens with the queen and spades over ace king with the ace and spades. We block the straights, we block all the strong flushes, so I'm gonna call this one. All right, today we're gonna to be playing Zoom 500 joined by Fallout 86, our coach for the cash game course. Welcome. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. For sure. We already made an introduction one of our recent cash game analysis videos. So uh, we jump right into the action. Of course, I'm gonna be playing and Fallout is gonna be sharing his thoughts on, on, on certain hands the way I played, especially with uh, me having a tournament background, if you want to turn this maybe a little more into cash game, we also want to practice a little more for, for a cash game. I think uh, it's it's a good mix to have someone with a huge cash game expertise. Maybe you can share a little bit while I'm playing uh, what games you're playing right now, which games you have been playing more online, more live. What is the what are the stakes? What are the games you feel the most comfortable with? Maybe you can also share a few thoughts on the course, what people can expect. And what kind of topics yeah, you focus sure. on? Sure, sure. So I am playing right now at the mixed um, at the mid stakes, and I always was. I always played around no mid two hundred. So yeah, no mid two hundred, four hundred, five hundred, something like this. Basically all the time in my whole career, and this is where I feel the most comfortable with. And yeah, the course is basically. For every player that wants to transition from MTTs over to cash games or has no clue about poker, right? Um, or plays micro stakes. Um, of course, we yeah, teach really all the fundamentals um, coming with new preflop ranges. And I think this is where most people are lacking, just the fundamentals on um, the game, on um, the spots that occur over and over. Mm. Of course, most of the time when people um, ask questions, you see, they assume wrong preflop ranges, wrong cost red ranges, um, and the situations that come up all the time. So big blind button, small blind, big blind, big blind, small blind, recent situations. Um, they have never put real work into this. And yeah, the course will definitely help you to master those situations. Yeah. I would say German precision in that course. Of course, you guys pay very much attention that um, we want to focus on the fundamentals, play them solid, but of course, not being too focused on finding the perfect frequencies. It's more about the foundation of the game to really understand, okay, what ranges do we play in certain spots? How do we approach it? That's why it's also an apprentice course. So if you already play NL 100, NL 200, you're crushing it, then it's probably not the right course for you. Absolutely, absolutely. When you have a solver and you're interested in the correct frequencies, you can do the work on your own. There's definitely not a cost for you. That's correct. I opened the second table, so hopefully we're going to have a little bit more action there as well. Uh, I just realized I need to... Yeah, Queen 8 off is already rather close i would go i would feel very comfortable with queen nine off but with no yeah, anti tuner graphics right? yeah you remember you can't you're not allowed to give me an advice during a hand like you can only share it after after the hand yeah um i was not teaching you that you cannot call i was just saying it's um definitely okay i was um, because I, I felt like you were about to say yeah i get to do the fx we should fall <laughs> okay we could have stopped the recording <laughs> You need to fold, Ben. You need to fold right now. Yeah. Um, no, I just want to say, in a lot of middling um, or close situations, when you're out of position and you're not 100% sure how to continue post-flop, um, I think it's definitely a better plan to just fold pre-flop because you don't know anyone in here, right? And super often, you're not 100% sure what the correct line will be. So um, in those super, super close spots with those yeah, weak offsuit hands, I always um, would go the safe route and fold um, the one combination more. Um, yeah. That's just way way better, way more profitable cost. 
you put yourself in so many tough poster situations when you defend just a little bit too wide preflop. And it's not that this pool is super easy, right? Yeah, you yeah. can get away with um, a ton. It's definitely one of the toughest pool, one of the toughest online pools right now that you can play. So yeah, I would really stick to solid fundamentals and not go insanely wide, especially out of position yeah, in situations where people have a perfect game plan, basically a button against big blind, right? You just get crushed when you call too light. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, in general, like you mentioned, um, I used to play a lot of live cash. Um, given the situations right now, I only play online, obviously. Yeah. Mm, usually I like the mix. Um, sometimes I go play live, um, can talk to other people, play in a very soft environment. And yeah, online always needed to yeah, stay on top of the game. I'm gonna go for big sizing on this board. Uh, we have good turns we can bear. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. I have my uh, shortcuts for. Um, For tournament sizings, yeah. I also yeah, choose exactly. an interest, was, choosing an interesting line here. What do you think about this um, preflop three bet? One second, I'm gonna. Uh, it goes. Yeah, it's what well, it's big blind against MP, right? Yeah. What hands would you usually three bet here? Yeah, I like that. I think. Yeah, a lot of strong suited suited aces, right? The ace ten, ace jack, ace queen, ace king suited type hands, and some suited broadways as <clears> well. <throat> um, they play so well for flop when you want to play for a lot of money. Um, even out of position, we flop a lot of nut draws. Um, strong top pair type hands. So yeah. those are definitely the hands you want to shoot at with. Yeah. And we also make him for king jack off, king queen off, which is already quite. Uh... Uh, we play against a lot of pocket pairs, which we're flipping against. Uh, we have good equity against most suited aces. We're only dominated by ace-10 suited and king-queen, king-jack suited. But like we make him fold king-queen off, king-jack off. Uh, we also head against this jack-10 suited, 10-9 suited. That's going to be peeling a 3-bet. So yeah, I... Yeah, he's feeling so much worse, yeah. 100%. And we have the nice playability range advantage. So yeah, definitely a hand we want to 3-bet. Mm. I was only thinking, um, I think this is a hand I want to call it 3-bet against, 100 big blinds deep in position, even though the sector pot ratio is decreasing now because of my bigger open raising, but um, yeah, I think this hand is just a little too strong. I would have expected also some bigger bets from him. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, Not the perfect bot for him. Yeah, I, I would probably expect it's like... It's one of these boards where we either bet big and uh, or we check, just naturally feeling. Um, we have a lot of 9-8 suiteds, 8-7 suiteds, 10-8 suiteds. I would probably start folding my 9-8 and 10-8 suiteds. I don't want to block the 10-9 and queen-10 suiteds that might be 3-betting. Um, I feel like the 6-7 with, I'm not going to jam, um, might be a reasonable can to call once again. Um, again, if I have anything like an eight or a six with a 10, like mostly 10, eight suited, even pocket tens or pocket nines, I would probably for, uh, prefer folding and calling this combo where I really don't block any blast and now we have a snap call. Yeah, definitely a nice river, we take that. <laughs> I would have probably also called a blank river, to be honest. Uh, I think having the seven there is, it's pretty good. Like, I really don't yeah, want to have a ten really, or nine. Really a nice candidate. I, I really don't want to have a ten or nine or there, a, even a queen. Like he, he probably is going to be bluffing with his ace queens, ace tens, queen tens, all these holdings, very very frequently. Um, Jack eight suited. I open pre. So I'm not like you. Oh, I'm hmm? sorry. Yeah. No, I was um, just mentioning um, on the flop super often you um, are allowed to use different sizings, right? So you can definitely bet a lot of his hands with one third and he will also have a second yeah. size most of the time on this low board texture, 75% probably. And yeah, as we saw, um, yeah, he tripled ace queen, which is also yeah, definitely fine. 
the question is always <laughs> um, how often can you get away with this, right? What are the correct frequencies? It's not like, oh, we should always triple barrel ace queen. In yeah, I find this stuff really not- bad, to be honest, because they, you can just barrel all this weaker a6, make me forward ace queens. Uh, <clears throat> I want to check this back, this board. We definitely want to have some checkbacks. Uh, would bet my king nine suited, king eight suited, benefit of holding out better king highs. Uh, that's my main thought process. And ri- river, I mean, we could potentially, but we block most of the good forex, like queen four, king four suited. Um, so I'm just going to check it down with my showdown value. If I have something like jack nine, I would certainly bluff uh, on the river. Yeah, don't mind betting just flop. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I also think so. I, I defend against another gun. Definitely going to go for a check race here. Don't need to go super big. Uh, I think turn now we start to polarize ourselves. We don't really have any like protection bets anymore. So we either have like the set to pair or our draws. Our draws also want to size it up. And I'm going to go for a slight over bet. Yeah, and it's also double. Out, but even on a blank, we still have a super, super strong head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's continuing yeah. so, so much worse. I mean, every top pair, right? All the draws, basically. Yeah. So queen nine, I'm defending. I'm just going to fold. Poker tens, we have an open race and against the small blind, I'm going to play four bit call because he's a very specific opponent. I know very well from tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> going to go for a small bet on yeah, the... But even as a default strategy, um, don't mind. Yeah, um, it's from what I've seen that very tense, tense is also like a mix of, of call and, 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 and four bit call. Exactly. I mean, small blind is definitely through getting really, really light against a button open, so yeah. we cannot. Ju- I mean, we could flat our entire or close to our entire, close to an, our entire range and only four by tens, like yeah, some bluffs, <laughs> right? Like yeah. ace jack off um, or ace ten off or whatever, and then some really strong hands like ace king and queens and kings and aces. But given that players are yeah, broken loose enough, we should also mix in some tens and jacks. Yeah, and yeah, all the ace king offs. I open small blind king queen off, uh, not the best board. Yeah, I think now our hand is pretty strong. Not going to be betting a seven or 10, so I'm probably going to be very polarized in the spot as well. Just going for pot. <clears throat> yeah, River, nice card. Um, also think both options are viable. Check out is also fine um, Yeah, to allow him to bluff his Total air. Yeah, but I think we have a lot of ace highs and can just bluff catch against uh, those, don't you think? Like if we have ace jack, ace king, we can mix in some 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 bluff catchers or some weaker queen yeah, eggs. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we have no no diamonds, right? He can have some diamonds as well. Mm-hmm. It's not that we have a check race spot on the river. We still can only check call. So yeah, yeah, of course. Top, yeah, yeah. Also, never a bad idea. Yeah. When there's no diamond, um, mm-hmm. we can definitely go for a check raise sometimes. So yeah, checking true, becomes a little true. bit better. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, those stronger top pair hands in when it goes check, 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 uh, and it's a re- relatively dry run out and you hit a very strong top pair on the river, you also want to you, you wanna consider um, check raising for value there. But if the backdoor flush gets there where he has all his, he can still have some flushes in his range, right? So we don't want to raise into yeah, a range. Yeah, 100%. That, yeah. Yeah. And then the occasion slow like play. He is definitely checking flop and turn. Yeah. What are the next updates you guys are planning on for the cash game course? Yeah, the first update is already out there. Um, Cold Smile um, showed our concepts at the. The online felt, I think he played a session of No Limit 50, um, where he applied all the concepts and strategy from our course. Uh, I love this. this is always my favorite because it's, especially when you went through the course, you want to see, okay, how does it work in practice, right? 
does it really work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People are always suspicious, but obviously it works. Um, best strategies always win. And the next update will be yeah, coming fairly soon. And I will talk about um, yeah, check race situations. So check race spots, mm, which hands to check race, which sidings to use, um, yeah, which hands to continue and so on. So yeah, a lot of people are definitely waiting the, um, the next the next part. Um, I'm going for a bet. I'm just I'm just a little afraid he checks back too many like Jack Queen Jacks, um, and over pairs that are not going to value bet because of this turn. And we have a bunch of busted flush draws. Yeah, for sure. Um, pushing my equity, uh, he folds on the first, oh no, he calls. Um, so he, I raise pre, goes check, check on the flop. I want to check this board, it's not the best board for my small blind raising range. Um, Queen and diamonds is a lot in this range. I feel like I either want to go jam or I'm just going to jam this. I think we want to be using a lot of big sizings here on this river for value as a bluff. Uh, definitely, definitely um, interesting river. Also flop, I think it's important to realize that in a lot of those situations, really um, important to use small sizings and check a ton on those mm. bad board textures, because otherwise yeah, you can just float with any two step turn and you lose a fortune. So oh, um, yeah, pay attention when Rainers are really, really loose and he has also a lot of um, hands that he can continue against small sizings on the flop that you want to check a lot of hands, sometimes check range when the board is really, really bad for you and you don't know how to navigate on the turn when you bet too much on the flop. Yeah. And yeah, like you mentioned, um, especially the turn and river, we should be really, really polarized on a lot of, um, a lot of runouts. <clears throat> um, what do you think about his... His turn sizing, I'm not gonna let the hand play. Yeah, I think I've missed this one. I uh, three bets. I mean, it's, it's go, pretty man. big, right? We can maybe consider folding. Yeah, yeah, in those positions, uh, it's already close. Um, yeah, given that the small one range has so many weak bluffs against MP and EP, it's definitely a spot where you can fold a little bit more than usual. That's for sure. Oh my god, I have a, we have a really weird spot here. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he raises pre. I just call uh, because we were talking about the other hands. So he bets, I raise the flop. He three bets me on this flop, which is probably not bad. And then he bets turn and gems river. Like, I don't see, I, I, I see some value with like jacks, but is he really value jamming it on the river? Yeah, the, probably. He's value jamming, yeah, we don't, yeah, we probably don't have a lot of tens in our range as well. Yeah. 10x. Um, That's really the worst run out ever. <laughs> yeah. Would you would you consider um, folding on, let's say, if the turn is at eight and the river is a seven, or like just a very dry run out? No. <laughs> No, I think this is this. I mean, um, if you fold this hand, you only call like a three plus, right? Because yeah, yeah, we can definitely not have ace king and stuff. Yeah. So when we think he's capable of having some bluffs, he is going to bet turn, bet river, and we also raise a hand like ace ten and stuff. So yeah, don't want to fold my entire range. I think um, he should be capable of bluffing at least some hands like um, king ten, king queen, um, on later streets where he blocks um, ace queen, ace 10. So yeah, I'm definitely going with my hand. But given that this is the worst run out ever, and even with his bluffs, he has two pair or straights, um, I cannot find enough hands that we beat. 
Because what can he really bluff show? I mean, a hand like Queen Jack, maybe, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's already hard no, to find really, those bluffs really on the river. Yeah. And in those situations, when it's so hard to find bluffs, but the value range is really, really loose, so he can have a lot of um, light value shows. In those situations, um, don't hero call too light, because yeah. the EV cannot be really, really good in those situations. Because um, even on the flop, right, it's not a standard situation that he's through its flop. Um, it's a really small range in general that's through its flop in, in those spots. And I think also in the beginning, most people make um, the mistake of hero calling too light. They just watch a poker series, right? They moved up in stakes and they think, oh, no, I need to hero call way more. Everyone's bluffing. But yeah, keep in mind, it's still the same game. Three cards on the flop, one turn, one river. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, stick to your ranges. I mean, yeah, you laugh, but so often I see it, right? I see it all the time that people um, think now everyone is bluffing and they can bluff catch way wider. But the EV is not really there, right? The EV is, or you make more EV when you just value bet correct, value bet really, really thin against bigger opponents. Um, in those spots, you can print money, but not when you um, hero call super marginal hands against good opponents. Yeah. I threw a Queens versus under the gun. I'm not going to be through with a lot of tens and nines. He can peel all the pairs, so he's going to have all the sets, which we don't have. So I think we have all the ace kings, ace queens. So I feel like it's a board where we want to do some checking. I don't. I think and also we're 100. We still quite deep. So I don't see myself. Um, um, yeah, check raising, getting it in on the flop against what? Like, if we're a little shorter, we can just check jam on him. Like, okay, but yeah, 100 percent, 100 bigs deep. Definitely can check raise. All the yeah. over pairs. Yeah. But 150 big blinds, nearly 150 big Queens, blinds. Queens uh, yeah. might be a legitimate hand to, um, we block Queen Jack, we unblock his most likely bluffs. Um, I think in these spots you don't want to block, block, block the ace in spades because these are his only bluffs with ace jack, ace queen um, in spades. Because this is what he's bluffing. He's not going to be bluffing with ace, queen, queen, and spades. But he's going to have king, queen, spades, queen, jack, spades. Um, this might be one of these spots where probably fine to fold in, in practice. But like in Zoom 500, I do have my ace kings that play check call. Actually, the king is pretty good to. But then I feel better. It's 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 better to 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 call queens than than he's not where you shoving king queen. I think. So ace king is kind of irrelevant. Like I prefer calling queens with the queen and spades over ace king with the ace and spades. We block the straights. We block all the strong flushes. So I'm going to call this one. Oh. Yeah, definitely uh, makes sense. So you definitely have a super super nice blocker. Um, yeah. And we also block the the flush, obviously having the queen and spades. Because if you have, let's say with ace, king, ace and spades, yeah, you block the nuts, but you also block a lot of bluffs. You probably block this more bluffs probably than, than actually value hands, right? Because ace, yeah. queen, ace, jack um, are already 12 combos with, uh, sorry, um, this is not supposed to be forward. Uh, if it's only the ace and spades, it's six combos, then flushes. Calling a three-way pre, it's probably like, Ace Jack is Queen. So how many? I, I'm not. I don't recall the exact board texture. Let's go. So yeah. Ace Jack, Ace Queen, and Spades. Um, maybe some Ace Five and Spades. It's like three, also three to six flushes. But you can have Ace Queen, Ace Jack with the Ace and Spades as bluffs, right? So now when we have the queen in spades, we block the flushes with the queen jack, which is important with the king queen in spades, and we unblock ace jack, ace queen with the ace in spades. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'm yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Mm. And I'm pretty sure if you would look it up, that the solver also wants to prefer calling this combo over um over let's say 
um, ace king or even aces. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I I think it's the same way. Um, and like you mentioned, um, even with king queen, he's probably not not value shoving river on a three spade board where we also have some stronger hands. Yeah. Um, I would, this is a spot, for example, I would definitely, um, fold on lower stakes. Like this is, for example, this is something you teach. Okay. This is how you approach it in theory. Um, yeah, 100% and 100%. But, yeah. Um, Cause you need to find enough bluffs and he needs to have, um, yeah, enough um, steps on the flop right when he checks back most of the time to realize equity then yeah his bet 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 range is probably a little bit too strong what do you think um, about his uh, his overbit jam on the river by the way do you think sounds he's, like a plan do you think he has i mean i'm not saying it's bad i'm just it just popped into my mind if we think about what we're going to be calling here do you think he's going to be ahead every second time i mean what are we calling we call it kings we have some slow plate flushes. Um, we call it queens and jacks, probably, but only with a. Uh, yeah, call aces. I'm not calling aces with. The, I'm not. I'm not calling aces. Especially not with a spade. But not. I don't think you can afford aces. Really? Okay. But isn't it better mm. to just call on this run out, even to call your ace king against the co co occasional pocket kings that he can play like this? Um, I mean, not not red aces, right? But but you cannot fold with the ace and spades. Okay, this is something so I'm not hundred percent sure, but I might think that he, since we block more blast, that he actually might be, might favor to call the red aces over having a black ace. Yeah, but I think then we just fold on the river a little bit too much when we call turn for oh, all those well, If, if like we call not... all the queens and jacks, we probably have jack 10 suited in our range as well as preflop three bet, if you remember. Yeah, we have like, yeah, like you mentioned, we have some king 10, some queen 10, ace 10. Um, yeah, even like eight, nine, we are continuing turn. So yeah, I think our turn check call range is not super small. And when we only call like jacks and queens and kings, uh, yeah, we're definitely falling. Okay. Uh, something like 70%. Interesting. I mean, it's a rare situation, right? Those situations don't come up all the time. 150 big blinds deep on a super, super ugly board texture. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. And like you mentioned in those um, player pools where he is definitely stabbing a lot, and um, yeah, he has uh, still a somewhat wide range preflop. We are just supposed to make some some strong hero calls in order to not fold too much from our range. Again, we know how um, the pool really plays. We are able to make adjustments. Um, I also basically never played um, 500 zoom here on Stars. You need to ask Cold Smile. I think um, he knows some of those opponents how they play, how the pool is really playing. Um, so I think some adaptions yeah. are always viable when you have good reasons um you make a pool analysis right in your tracker to see how the pool is performing how percent um office range is really stabbing flop on xyz board textures yeah. it always makes sense to get a better understanding and also if you played like 100k hands you get a really really good idea what and how much are people stabbing um what are spots in which people over bluff maybe you can also fold, fold just queens and aces on the river um don't think so but um on a lot of stakes this would be definitely an option yeah But it's definitely not that um, yeah, one call is super good and the other is super, super bad. This is definitely far away from reality. We'll be still fairly close together. Yeah. He three bets like 2.6x preflop, which is kind of weird. I don't know if he's, he's a... right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Two points. an option. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just it's definitely uh, very, very uncommon. Yeah. Yeah, it's not super super often happening. I mean, given that he has position, he can realize equity. Um, you can still get away with some smaller sizings, but yeah, it's not not really a, a thing 
most people just stick to three X. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit bigger against the smaller smaller open sizings. That's correct. I would also say it's never a huge blunder. Uh, what happened left? We call preflop, you bet flop? Uh, no, T3 bets pre, I call. I um, think it's a mix between four betting calling. I he, be, he checks flop, we check back. I was thinking, but I, we have all the ace jacks, jack tens we can be bluffing with. I feel like this hand is a little too strong to turn it into a bluff already. Yeah. I mean, when we um, plan to bet flop, we basically need to triple, right? Yeah. Which, which I don't mind. It's pointless. I mean, oh, only if the, if the diamond gets there, of course. Yeah. With the intention. Otherwise, what are we really accomplishing when we bet flop, right? He folds most worse, calls all better hands, nice hands, sir. Um, yeah, like you mentioned. Yeah. And yeah, you have all the top pairs, all the second pairs, <laughs> all the draws. So no need to turn jacks into a bluff. And we still reach short on often yeah. enough. I really like his tournament, actually, because we have to call all, like this sizing, we kind of have to call the under pairs with a diamond. Um, he, 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 he dictates the sizing that, uh, he doesn't face a big sizing. Let's say if we, if we turn, if we start bluffing or something and then on the river, it goes check, check. Like in this instance, okay. It was a bit unlucky that we had jacks, but like, we're going to have eights, sevens, fives, uh, with one diamond. So yeah, we never have jacks there. And he also denies a lot of equity. Yeah. So of course the turn is also not the best card for him. But um, it definitely makes sense to value it thin there to deny equity and also get a ton of value from worth. Because when you go ahead and check and yeah, your opponent starts betting 80, 90 percent pot, you're in a super dicey situation. And um, same applies on the river. So yeah, betting small yourself makes sense, especially especially um, yeah, on on yeah, bad turn cards where we can also have some flushes. Right, it makes no sense for him to polarize too much. Then his hand would never be a bet. Take your game to the next level with a tournament masterclass. Enroll now at RaiseYourEdge.com. The tournament masterclass. Let's crush. With a backdoor flush draw, would start betting. We have a little bit of... Um, Benefit folding out better ace highs, but I think just stabbing, stabbing this would be a little too. Too bad. Uh, sorry, I was talking about a different hand, but never mind. <laughs> um, trying to target his tens to. He's still gonna have ace four, ace five suited, ace nines, ace tens on the small blind. I think I'm gonna bet the turn here. Not too big. Um, so I set these basically, um, if I go too big, I think he has too often an easy decision with like, cause he knows he just has a pure flush for too often with his pocket tens. Um, queen is good. Uh, makes it less likely he has pot control ace queen, but I think now we just check it back. And would you consider value betting the river? Yeah, I think when he flat small blind, he... No, no, we he three bets pre. Ah, he checks flop. Oh, he sorry, check. I think I missed the action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he checks, you bet, flop big, bet turn big, and check raw, right? No, no, I I step the flop small. I think this is supposed to be... Ah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, yeah, of course, I, I, I wanted to ask why do you flop so big, um, but yeah, probably... Yeah, watch watch another table. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's it's super legit. Um, like you mentioned, he um, definitely wants to check a lot on those board textures, on those monotone board textures. You are just supposed to check a lot because yeah, we as a caller on the button have all the flushes, mm, and we are also not not um, folding pairs with flush doors and stuff on the flop right now. Mm. And like you mentioned, we are still ahead against like A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A9, A10. So yeah, a lot of hands in reality. And um, I would also most of the time bet big turn uh, and realize free equity instead of going for two 
small streets where he um, will just fold um, yeah, all those middling pairs, right? those jacks, queens, kings on brick runouts. So we just lose a little bit of value because when you bet big turn, those hands will never fold. Um, I three bit pre, button versus cutoff. He bets flop, bets big turn. I think we can't really fold yet. We still have kings, queens, tens in our range. And now it gets dicey. This is a run out where if he jams, essentially zero, zero, zero bluffs possible. Like eight, nine That's gets there. I mean, eight, six suited, he might not even be defending against my three bet. He, pro he has to jam something like 10, nine, like turn something into a bluff. Uh, Yeah, on those runouts, I would not worry too much. I mean, you have all the better hands. No need to bluff catch all the time with top here. No kicker when you have all the top here, top kicker, all right. top here. Let's Get run it. So much equity. Mm -hmm. Maybe he folds. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I mean, we we, polarize, we we bet rather quite polarized. Like, I would have said king four in spades uh, type of hands. Sweet. Best situation ever when he just max. Mm hmm. Gonna be calling this three bet here. Uh, I don't mind raising. I, I mean, since. With a nut flush story block and ace, but it would be ace and spades, eight and spades, and deuce and clubs. I would feel better to um, raise some of my, let's say, king high nut flush draws to get it in against weaker draws. But here, I don't really want to be raising. And uh, now we're going to be quite polarized. So I'm not really going to bet small ever here on this turn. So I'm going to have like king, queen, king and spades, basically bluffing all my king, queens for sure. Perhaps start bluffing with some lower pairs as well. So pocket threes, pocket fives with one spade because we, we still have sets, flushes. So king, queen one uh, with the spades, king and spades, queen and spades, and then pocket threes, pocket fives and ones uh, and spades would be my term loves. And then yeah. also German. Yeah, definitely. Also I think in his shoes, we can be quite aggressive on this turn. Yeah. Oh, sorry, if he, if he bets turn, we can definitely expect that he bets small most of the time. He don't want to polarize too much and yeah, he wants us to call with worse. So when he polarizes himself too much on the card, on a card that favors so much our range, he just punishes himself. So we expect a lot of check calls in reality on this board texture because this card is so much better for our range than for his because yeah. yeah, our flop calling range are much more flushes than in his betting range. Because he bets his entire range and we yeah, just call a ton of flush draws and ace highs and pairs, but that's <laughs> about it, right? If you have like jet jack ten hearts, you're just holding flop, but he still mm. has jack ten hearts in his flop betting range. Yeah. So always think about what the card actually does. It's rather small for a squeeze, isn't it? Ah, it's all right. I'm still going to be yeah, calling yeah. here most of my pairs. I was just looking if you are 100 big plan effective, but yeah, even 100 bigs, I think it's standard. Did defend, probably folding like 80% of my range here, but I still need to defend something. I would be like ace 10 suited, uh, my pairs, and yeah, against this sizing, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think folding pre is easier. You think we should fold pre flop? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, what are you really accomplishing when you tell me now you want to fold pre flop to a squeeze nearly all the time? 
No, I mean, I would, I would fold around 80% of my range and I would mostly defend. Um, oh, I you mean 80% from pocket force? No, from my entire range. Like, yeah, but when, why are you calling pre when you always want to fold against the squeeze? Then big blind and small blind are so inclined to squeeze, right? When they see, oh, Ben's <coughs> pulling like 70% to a squeeze when he flats on the button. But the prefabric razor is also defending against the squeeze. Yeah, that's that's obviously correct, but you just make your life miserable with capped ranges on so many board textures. I would just keep it simple, heads up. You would you would three bet you play with three bet only from the button? Uh, maybe mixing some cores, but even then before Yeah, but then no you have the same but then you have the same I mean I would certainly mix in some slow plays. I have I have also tens nights in my range I mean, from button. You you're supposed to have actually a decent amount of slow plays. At least that's what I remember from tournaments, and I can imagine that with that um, also being the case in turn uh, in cash games, so maybe it's not eighty yeah, percent. But let's say if I defend like 70 percent of my range, David is going to be defending sixty percent of his range. He cannot just go hammer against us. No, def definitely not. That's true. But um, I also think multi way is so much tougher to yeah pick the correct strategy besides heads up. So I would really stick to this rivet only approach. Um, in those positions. I mean, if, if you have a weaker opponent behind, but especially with good racks behind, I really see no reasons to play 300, uh, sorry, three-handed. Mm -hmm. um, Makes sense. In yeah. a sandwich with good players um, and basically let the <clears> big plan <throat> be like equity for free or give him an awesome prize that he basically has to defend even a little bit wider than usual. So yeah, I think those spots are just so complicated to solve. Um, to pick the correct sizings, pick the correct strategies, I would just simplify a little bit and through that cost it's so much easier when we are heads up, right? You know which. I don't mind playing multi-way pots. Yeah, but um, you probably make also more mistakes when you play multi-way. That's the only issue I have. Again, when you play against unknowns, against shorter stacks in the big blind, I'm in for a calling range all the time, no question. But with really tough players behind, I would not complicate this too much. Hmm. But both strategies obviously work, right? It's not that um, my strategy is good and your strategy is bad or your strategy yeah. is good and my strategy is bad. Um, I think the EV is nearly the same when we both play nearly perfect, but I think I will definitely make way more mistakes multi-way than heads up. So I just throw it all the time and keep it simple. Yeah. Of course, when you're deeper, um, you can include a few more flat calls, right? Cause um, dynamics change. Um, quite a bit. Mm, that's definitely possible to include more flat calls when playing like 200, 300 big blinds deep. Because yeah, in forward pot situations, um, a lot of weird stuff is happening. So yeah, in those games, I can see myself establishing a calling range. But around 100 big blinds deep, I think just always good. <laughs> All this weird only approach. Yeah. Okay. But again, when you like to solve multi-way spots, go for it. <laughs> I think that's actually a big benefit because it's so hard to solve multi-way spots. So it's not that yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. I mean, when you um, solved most other situations and you think, oh, um, most players are really poor multi-way, especially when they call too wide in the big blind, given the odds, right? So I have an advantage establishing a calling range. This could be um, a thing, no question. Yeah. But for most players, oh, big fan on the left. <laughs> Just gonna fold the jack 10 <clears throat> against that sizing. Oh, yeah, I think nowhere. he's honest when he's a big fan. Uh, I think Queen 6 is quite close from the cutoff, but we open it. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, those 6x hands perform actually quite good. Those King 6, Queen 6, sometimes Jack 6 unit. Don't know really why, but they usually perform a little better than the other hands in the solver. Yeah. And also on final tables for rejamming. So E3x is pre, we call, would start folding if E3.5x opens, but. Good card for us. Oh, no need yep. to bluff. No. Oh. 
Ja, 4-5 auf ist definitely close. Um, don't mind marking pre. Mm, you think we can mark this and I should 3x open? Mm, yeah. Probably, probably, yes. I mean, yeah, we have some playability, so probably really, really close. Depends what the pool is raising first in, right? <clears throat> Again, 40%, My, probably. Do we really, ever, really close, do we ever click it here? Or we just jam our range? I mean, I feel like clicking makes sense because you can still get, like, let's say if you have queens or you have ace king and you click it and someone jams, you're always going to have kings plus, right? Yeah, but. Or we just jam our range. Right, this spot jamming ace five suited, if he sits on queens or he's an ace king. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably just ripping. I mean, you have just so much from your stack invested and it's a situation where, yeah, I mean, probably it doesn't matter. I think his call off range is probably the same, right? If, if you establish a five bet range um, yeah. or not. So I don't think there's a major difference. I mean, we can go really, really small um, with our five bet. So in theory, we could have some bluffs that we fold, but in reality, yeah, not happening so often. So I think you can argue for both sides. In theory, probably five betting. Hmm. Yeah, probably five betting is still a little bit better because you could be bluffing and you could fold against the show. But again, in reality, how often is this happening? Yeah. I mean, your range is insanely strong either way. I would jam my, there, my ace five suited. Because I think good regs yeah. are gonna. would start folding. <clears throat> You just definitely get them to fold queens and even probably some yeah. ace kings. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I think if it's a king <laughs> nine, he starts bluffing. I, I think this spot is just so hard to bluff. Yeah, but I, I like his sizing. We are always in a dicey situation with um, our our small pairs. Yeah. Five. Definitely going to double barrel this board. Interesting. Hmm. Not going to fold. Could be an expensive pot though. If it goes check check, we have to bluff the river. Don't see. Greed. Yeah, A-type would be definitely a nice candidate for that. We are never good at showdown. Sorry? A-type would be a nice candidate to bluff river, that's for sure, if he checks turn. Yeah. I mean, yes, we also block some draws, but yeah, we basically never ever yeah, win mean, at showdown. So it's like I guess we call so, against the race yeah. only maybe ace queen back to a flush door something like this and then like the seven eight suited right so yeah, what, what are we gonna really have like this is yeah yeah, yeah exactly we, we i mean there are basically no draws available besides your draw maybe one more gut shot and that's about it yeah oh we have tens on both tables Sweet. I actually don't mind mixing some flats here. I actually flat on both tables. Yeah, big blind against another gun. Would also not, don't want to play a huge pot out of position against a super strong range. And we close the action. If he squeezes and he folds, I call. If he squeezes, he calls. I'm going to jam, I think. I think now we can just call it. Play in position. Yeah, otherwise, he's supposed to play perfectly against you, right? Yeah. Of 
question is if we get it on the floor, but since we have the diamond, even if a diamond peels off, I'm not really afraid. Oh. We are not losing that often on this board texture. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, probably going to jam the turn now with all the draws. Uh, he might be bet calling ace king, ace queen in clubs. Still has ace king, ace queen in diamonds. Um, that are not going to bluff the river anymore. So I think this turn I want to be jamming. I mean, I'm not going to afford an overpair here. And once he bets that big, uh, I think I'll just want to stick it in. Good luck. Um, but it's really, really important um, that we always stick to this rule, right? No need um, folding big over pairs when we call a three bet or call yeah. a four bet. Otherwise, it makes more sense to fold pre flop when you don't want to go broke with those yeah. those hands. And like you mentioned, there are so many so many draws out there. Um, we still want de to deny some equity. Yes, we want to also have some call call hands. But given that there are so many draws, so many ugly, ugly rivers. Um, yeah, we definitely want to to have a raising range on the turn and 10 fits perfectly into the raising range. It's probably maybe a few nut flush draws and then it's tens, right? Like every, probably everything else might maybe jacks, but I can also see since he might be squeeze calling tens pre, so I probably start jamming jacks sometimes. But like, yeah, I think tens is just this hand that really wants to jam. I'm just going to fold here, I think with one player behind. Yeah, no way, multi-way, we can continue here. Poor equity realization and yeah, one player behind left to act a fun spot. Also when player behind calls, we are just done always and invested so much money, so many big blinds. Gonna go for a check raise on the floor. Unblock a lot of his steps like King Jack, King turns. I think it's good to also mix in some check raises with these hands. I feel like it's something that lack a lot of players. Um, so that's why it's really good to step your like 10 knight and hearts or king jack and hearts. Um, gonna raise big so I can jam the turn. And then, yeah. Yeah, really good point. <clears throat> I think what you say is super often true because when. Yeah, the only risk he has that you check call, right? He can still um, stab with so much air because you still fold a lot and he yeah. also remi remains a lot of equity against our check call range. So make sure to mix in enough check raises. Yeah, and even if it's king, queen, queen, jack now, he might be bet calling some ace five, ace fours. Kind of sucks. I would have preferred a brick, but like he still has some like king, nah. I mean, if he has King Jack in the hearts, he really hates his life now. Oh, it's good luck. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm on the on the on the turn. He's um, basically bet calling King Queen, Ace Queen, Snap, but Queen Jack, Queen Ten. Oh, is really oh boy, he's definitely folding. Then uh, I think he's definitely folding when turn is not a heart. Yeah. Not a heart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was. I mean, probably had a couple of other tables, but like. Uh, if he was really yeah, taking that, you would, how, how can you ever bet call the flop then? If you if you intend to fold turning a flush draw there, but yeah, probably just said <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think on the on the flop he has a call, but on the turn, yeah, um, yeah. most of the time it's a fold against your jam, so it yeah. would have worked. But again, it's not important, right? So our play was still still um, a, a good play, yeah, in the long run. And yeah, sometimes it's just not working out. But we need a bluffing range. Yeah. And um, if we never bluff, our opponent has no incentive of bluff catching ever. <clears throat> and we're also easy to play because our opponent can just always go ahead and fold. Yeah. So always think about counter strategies and not only think, how can I exploit my opponent? Can I check call flop here? Also think about realistic check raise ranges. And you want to have some equity, so never raise something like 8-9 offsuit on the flop, right? We can turn maybe an open ender, but no backdoor flash draw. So yeah, straight draws, front door flash draws, something like this is usually a pretty good raise. Maybe some yeah, gut shots or backdoor flash draws of overcuts, but no random junk, please.
But I realize when you're not playing yourself, it's way harder to follow the action, talking and watching yeah, the yeah, tables. Yeah, it is, yeah. Seven is a good card, doesn't really improve his range a lot. He doesn't raise the flop. I can ace nine, I can bomb it. Ace ten, I can bomb it. What the fuck? <clears throat> I'm thinking to jam because it's like a7. a7 and 7s against a small sizing. 7, 8 suited. It's pretty much it. Um... You can have some weirdly like jack nine floats with backdoor ten nine floats. So action was um, you raise pre flop, bet flop, bet turn big, and he check raises. Yeah. Boom. Easy game. Ah. Uh, yeah, I think on the turn, I mean, you just fold if you bluff. Don't expect him to raise hard, hard ever on the turn that big, right? Yeah. So don't mind calling calling your actual hand. Yeah, I mean, it's even call or jam, of course. I would way. never fold. It's like a 3x raise. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously. Um, no, I mean, when he's not raising um, not raising um, hard, <laughs> hard too often and you block back doors, what is he um, raising then, right? Then, yeah, it's not a huge raise, full range. Yeah, I mean, if it's always value, it's a stupid jam, but... <clears throat> no, I mean, not always value, but you block his, bluff, you block his, bluff, uh, you block his bluffs with um, having two space. There's a problem. Yeah, but... Because it's not hard too often. I mean, my, my bluffs that I jam on the, on the turn, what would be your bluffs? Aren't you always blocking his bluffs then? Yeah, but I don't think he's raising too often with hard hard, so shoving hard hard would even be better than shoving spade spade in this situation. Okay. I was just, if yeah. he has like 10 9, jack 9 hearts, like the weaker flushes on the flop, um, where he turns. Are you big and, turn, right? Uh, even 6 4 hearts, 10 9 hearts, jack 9 hearts, 9 5 hearts. Uh, these combos, I definitely see in his range. Also, for sure, a spade. So, would you cons Because I don't really see the, the point of jamming, let's say, king, queen, and hearts, because we dominate all these draws. So I want to jam yeah, hands where, sure. I mean, where I'm making be for it better draws. That was just the way I was thinking about yeah, that's, it. Yeah, that's for sure, Ben. Um, was I'm um, talking about the combo draws, I don't think there's a point in shoving king high, queen high flush draws. Yeah, so yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. I'm not saying it's 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 a good jam. Like, this is for sure. I mean, um, probably also he shouldn't be doing a lot of raising. Like, probably ace-3 just wants to raise the flop against the small sizing. Like yeah, most of the time I agree. Most of the time raising those hands, but he also wants to have slow, slow plays that he can raise brick turns. Don't mind that. Otherwise, he can only raise a seven and sevens. So yeah, having yeah, some. But eight, once eight, I start overbetting, you also don't need to raise a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Because, when, yeah, yeah, I think his raising range is definitely smaller against the overbet than usual, that's for sure. I mean, way smaller. Because he always risks of getting <laughs> getting shoved with his, with his um, boss. I actually even think that... I've seen some sims for tournaments with like 70 big blinds, 60 big blinds, button versus cutoff that you also mix in some ace-king off flat cards. Have you seen similar for... For cash button games? Blind? Button versus cutoff, ace-king off flat cards? Or is it 100% frequency 3-bet? I mean, like I mentioned, when you don't establish a flat call range, you never have this problem. Yeah, could be a thing in theory. I mean, probably not the worst idea, right? To not cap yourself too much um, in a lot of other situations. I mean, when we um, sometimes call forwards, we also want to include aces, right? So it's um, the same idea, just on a different street. So I can see that this is true. If we have flat call ranges, that we should have some hands that we can also um, yeah continue on a lot of board texts, just where we are not 
capping ourselves on yeah, 10 jack queen and ace axe that we only have like ace queen ace jack suited. Could be a thing, but not 100% true. Never, oh, never if he bets, I would have jammed the river. Pocket tens. He's forbidding pocket tens. That's interesting. Two hundred big blinds deep. Uh, facing the four with three bet jacks on the big blind against hijack. Just calling. <laughs> and yeah. Just nice board texture. I mean, it's good for like you can't hope for a better board texture. No. Best board texture ever for Jax, that's for sure, so, yeah. And definitely just gonna get it in here. <clears throat> Raising small so I can have some goofy bluffs. Oh. I think we need a Jack. Three? Ah, uh, three doesn't help either. <laughs> no, not really. King? Uh, uh, close. <laughs> they always have it. I, I it's, it's such a long time ago, to be honest, when I saw the last 4-bit bluff in Zoom 500. I mean, not saying yeah. never, but especially against the big blind when you three bet against hijack, I just feel like people really struggle four bet bluffing against the big blind. Yeah, and it makes sense, right? I mean, the big blinds three bet or the range from the big blind is in general <clears throat> a little bit tighter, yeah, more. So it makes no sense to include way more, way more bluff four bets than usual. Or yeah, you can even get away with bluff four betting a little bit less. Yeah. Gonna click sit out next big blind. We already have been playing for an hour. Uh, we're gonna do the same format with Cold Smile to also introduce his his way of teaching, his art of talking about poker, sharing concepts, sharing insights. Um, thank you so much already, Follow for joining here today. I think it was a very valuable session. Actually, what we can do, um, what I would do is. I will run the, do you remember the board texture with the pocket queens? Because I didn't turn uh, on my tracker. And nine, seven, king of three spades on the turn. <clears throat> Something like this, pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to see, for sure. Oh, I think we can value bet the river here, or just call it. Okay. Good bluff by him. Great. Yep. I like it. Right. Uh, thanks for having me. It was a super fun session. Um, <coughs> yeah, had some really tough spots, some fun spots. So really, really good variety, I think. Yeah. Great, guys. Then uh, if you guys have a question about a spot, drop it in the comments. Not your generic bullshit. Uh, oh, I didn't like this hand. Share it. If you want to share something, then be precise, share your input, then we can have a productive debate. If not, just shut the fuck up. Uh, and yeah, appreciate the support, of course. And even if you share criticism with a hand, we're down to hear your, your thoughts, your opinion. Why would you play it different? Don't forget, share your why. Um, if you're not willing to spend a couple of minutes to break down your thoughts and share your way of playing a certain hand and why you think you would play it differently. Um, I would love to hear that. Also, Fallout would love to hear that. And then we can engage and go back and forth. Uh, so, yeah. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Fallout, thanks again. And then see you guys next time. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.